All right, so for your um, test out, I already put a document on Blackboard and hopefully you all got to that to let you know exactly what you're expected to do in your test out. And I'm going to try to demonstrate all of that um, today. So of course the first thing you want to do is verify your orders um, and do all your indirect care stuff. Gather your supplies. When you go in a room, do all your indirect care stuff. Um, we're doing irrigation, so we need goggles. Um, my other PPE, I need sterile gloves and clean gloves. I'm going to use the clean gloves to remove the dressing. Um, I also have the biohazard bag. We make sure that we're putting all wound care, uh, all wound dressings into a biohazard bag. So you never can do this with my glasses on. Um, so I've identified my patient. I've come in. I've provided for privacy. Um, clean my hands. I'm going to put my gloves on. And I'm going to remove the dressing. I'm going to make sure I'm careful of the patient's skin. So I want to hold the skin down as I pull the tape off. And then to remove my packing, I want to make sure that I don't contaminate the, uh, the wound bed. So what I'm going to try to do is um, grab the actual packing that's inside with the pad on the outside. I'm going to try to pick it up, and it should come out in one piece. If you're having difficulty, if it's sticking, you can get um, some saline and try to wet the edges to try to get it to um, remove from the wound bed. But of course, I'm going to do my coca here. I'm going to take note of the color of my wound bed, um, the color of my drainage here. Um, remember, we're going to assess the odor after we cleanse the wound. But I'm also going to look for the consistency and amount of my drainage. Then I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to take it and keep it inside of my glove. So that way it's well contained. All right, so then I need to set up my sterile field. I'm going to first put this chuck pad down because I'm going to do irrigation. And I don't want the bed to get messy. Notice I already have my patient on his side or her side so that um, for my irrigation it can run down. Um, you can use a sterile bowl to put your gauze into and your saline, so we'll need that. I have my um, saline here. I'm going to get a wound culture, so I have my culturette. I have some gauze, and I have my gloves and ABD pads. And I also have um, my cotton tips um, applicators to measure. I'm going to open my irrigation tray. Just going to open everything up so I can have access to it. When opening packages with the applicators inside, it's a good idea, or gauze, it's a good idea to actually grab the object from underneath and peel the paper back. That way it keeps it contained and keeps it from popping out on you. And when you're opening your packages, you want everything to be open towards you. It's tricky to keep that paper up the back. I don't need this. Notice I grabbed the gauze packing from with my thumbs. I have good control that way.
And I'm trying to put things in the order that I'm going to use them on the table. This is not opening good for me at all. Use that same technique. I grab the sticks at the top and then I can fill that down a lot easier. I'm going to get my tape ready. With my last piece, I would um, put my date initials in the time on my piece of tape. I'm going to bring that around that way. I'm going to come around this way to get my sterile bowl. And I don't want to touch it because I want to keep it sterile, so I'm going to squeeze it out walk around and place that on the table just like that without touching it. That is all. I'm going to go ahead and open my saline. It's already been opened. It's dated within 24 hours. Keep the label to my hand. Walk around and pour well, after I lift it. Walk around and pour that. I don't need a whole lot in there because I can see um, about how much gauze I'm going to need to put in that wound bed. I'm just kind of eyeballing it to measure what I might need. All right, so now I want to get my sterile gloves on. Oh, actually, if I'm irrigating, I prefer to do that the clean technique. Do you mind having me a pair of gloves? Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, irrigate clean, and then I'll put my sterile gloves on. So this is sterile, but it's okay for me to touch it because I'm not going to be doing anything by putting this container into the wound bed. I just want to keep the inside of the container sterile. So I'm not going to touch the inside of the container, but I can certainly touch the outside of it. I'm going to sit this in here. You want to make sure that sometimes the um, tip is covered with a cover. You want to make sure to pull that cover off so that the uh, syringe is exposed. I'm going to walk back around and get my saline. Lift it again because I've already put the top back on it. And pour some solution in. Sometimes you don't know exactly how much you need because remember we have to irrigate until it's clear. So I might need more than that. I might not. Notice I put the syringe directly in and I tried not to touch the outside rim of the container. I'm going to drop my solution. For your test out. I don't want you guys to use the saline on the mannequins. It gets too messy and um, too complicated. And I'm not going to use too much to demo. Remember our technique to go from cleanest to dirtiest, usually top to bottom. So I would just do straight from here and work my way down. Okay. Um, this is going to drip down. 
I could take this basin to collect some fluid here on the edge if I needed to. Um, once that's done, if I needed more solution, I could go directly back in, draw up some more, and do it again from top to bottom. Okay? Um, you don't want to go in a back and forth motion. Okay? You just want to go from top to bottom, one side, get more solution, go down the middle, get more solution, top to bottom on the other side. Once that's complete, I want to take a gauze and you can make a little puff with the gauze by grabbing four corners. That way I'm keeping the middle part that's going to touch the patient's skin sterile. All right, so I just touch the four corners to each other into the middle of my hand. And then you can just dry the outside of the peri wound with your gauze. Discard that. Okay, so I'm done with my irrigation. I can take these clean gloves off. I would do my hand hygiene again. Um, I'm going to need more gauze, so I'm going to open up some more packages here. If I needed to move my stuff down, if I'm finding I'm running out of room or need more room, I'm touching just the outer edges of these papers here to move them down. Again, I'm making sure that the gauze is on the side toward me so I can reach it. Does it want to cooperate? Um, I do still need to get wound measurements, so I could have done them before I irrigated or after. It really does not matter. Your checklist, I think, goes in order of doing the measurements first and then irrigating. I like to irrigate and get the, the wound nice and clean first. It really does not matter. There's no right or wrong. <coughs> um, a lot of times the gauze packages have measurement tool on the side of them. You could use that. Um, or a different measurement tool. Um, I would have clean gloves on again. I got rid of mine. But I would put on clean gloves again at this point. Grab my cotton tip. And the first measurement I'm going to get is my length. So I'm going to bring this up to the wound bed from the longest point to the longest point. <clears throat> without touching the actual wound bed. Then I can put that up against my measurement tool. I'm going to write that down. Discard this. I'll get a new one to do my width. Just being safe. I didn't go inside the wound bed, but just being safe. From the longest point the widest point to the widest point, I will get that measurement. Okay, measure that, discard that, write that down, go in and get my depth to so the deepest part on this guy is straight there in the middle. So I could take this measurement tool without touching the actual wound bed, just kind of eyeballing where the edge of the wound is and get that measurement. Discard that, write that down. And there's no tunneling or undermining going on, so that's all I need to measure. I'm going to 
going to go ahead and put my sterile gloves on. All right, so now I can touch these supplies because I'm sterile. When packing, we only want to pack with one piece. So I'm taking one gauze because, you know, each pack has two gauzes in them. And I'm going to wet this because this is a sterile solution. It's okay for me to touch that. I want to wring out any excess fluid. I don't want it to be drenching wet. And then you need to fluff your gauze open <clears throat> to pack the inside of the wound. So you don't want to fling it around too much. I don't want to take this and shake it out. I want to make sure I'm controlling it with my sterile hands. Get that to open up as much as you can. And that's what we call fluffing the gauze. That way we're not packing the wound too tight. And then you want to make sure that you have a sterile cotton tip applicator available to use to, to help guide you your, your gauze in. What I did, a uh, technique for that, um, is to kind of twirl it. If you twirl it, it drops the paper right down so that way you're not struggling with it. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down with the packing. I'm going to make sure not to touch the peri wound. I want to go directly into the wound bed. And I'm going to try not to take my fingers and put them in a the wound bed either because I don't want to accidentally contaminate myself. Right, now that's packed all in there. I'm going to keep a hold of this. I'm going to take another gauze and moisten it. I don't want to drench this one. I want to just moisten it. And again, just get any excess fluid out. And what I'm going to do is just lay this directly on top of that packing. Um, what I'm going to do with this one, instead of fluffing it, I'm folding it over just as a covering onto the wound bed. All right, and that's our wet to moist. So we can discard this. We want to try to make sure that all um, openings are covered as best as possible and then we can go ahead and put the ABD pad on and the tape. When we're taping we want to go in the opposite direction of the uh, natural contour of the body so since the abdomen is naturally vertically, when we move, it moves vertically with us. We want to go in the opposite direction with the tape. And remember, I did date this ahead of time. I dated it, timed it, and initialed. Okay, I can discard my gloves. Oh, I didn't get my wound culture, did I? All right, we would have gotten a wound culture of obviously before we started packing. So um, you would have wanted to do that after irrigation. Right after irrigation, you get your wound culture. Um, we can, let me see.
um, what, what you would do to get your wound culture before putting your packing in. You just want to make sure that you keep your, um, your cotton tips narrow. Go straight into the wound bed from the top, work your way down the side, roll it around into the middle, and then down the other side, roll it down. Just keep it inside of the wound bed. You don't want to lift up with your culture tip. You want to stay in the wound bed. This has a cap on it. You would twist this cap off and stick this directly in without touching the rim of the cap. Once this is inside, this culture that's down here needs to be broken in order to activate it to read the, the results and then you send it to the lab with the patient's, you know, information on it and your time, the time that you collected it and the site that you collected it from. <coughs> any questions about any of that? It can be clean because it's right after irrigation. You can keep your clean gloves on and collect it because remember only this is going into the wound bed. You're not touching the wound bed with your fingers. so. That's okay as long as you keep this sterile. The sterile gloves is just when you're applying the new dressing? It's just when you're packing the wound, yep. Any other questions? So if the wound is bigger than that, do we need more than one piece of gauze? We always want to use just one piece. So for bigger wounds, we'll use like a gauze roll. Any other questions? Is one part of the wound too much work? No, you want to keep the same culture tip for the whole wound bed. Even if this wound bed had undermining and tunneling, I would try to go into the tunneling and up under the undermining with the same culture stick. You want to stay inside of the wound bed. Yeah, you're making sure that that, that cotton tips um, swab is not touching the peri. You don't want it to touch the peri wound or the edge. You want to be on the inside of the wound. Do you mean like on the side, like where it's like the, so the tissue? As long as you're in uh, touching so tissue, you start from the top, work your way all the way down that side of that tissue, come up through the middle, and down the other side. You want to get all areas of the wound bed. If you want to twirl, you can twirl your cotton tip swab as you go along. Any other questions?